Good afternoon. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Pagani Design PD1718. This watch is available from Trendy Men's Watch Store on AliExpress for €114. Euro. So firstly, let's look at the box that the watch comes in, and then I'll talk you through the other items one gets with a piece. So the watch comes in this cardboard watch box. Now, this is the first time I've seen this metallic blue coloured watch box. And if you look at the reverse, you can see that it has EU Bridge Advisory GmbH. So apparently Pagani Design resellers on AliExpress are now using these metallic blue boxes rather than the matte black boxes if the watch is shipped from an EU warehouse. So that's an interesting change. I'll show you the interior. One removes the lid and there's a protective foam panel and the watch sits on a piece of foam inside a foam cutout, as one would expect. So, although basic, it does suffice in protecting the watch in shipping, and I think it's perfectly acceptable to use this style of basic watch box, bearing in mind it's a low-tier price point piece. That's only €114. Euro. With the watch, one also gets this nylon NATO strap, as you can see, contrasting black and red fabric, nicely woven. It's like a seatbelt weave and I really like the quality of it. We've got stainless steel keepers to it, brass satin finish to the hardware throughout. And we've also got a, a brass satin finish buckle and tang, nice heavy gauge of metal to the 316L grade stainless steel hardware. Although it's unsigned, it's sterile, it doesn't have Pagani Design laser etched or engraved as per other NATO straps. This, the keepers are stitched either side to prevent them sliding out of position. And there's plenty of length on the strap Plenty of holes in it to allow for fine tuning the adjustment, so it will fit up to an 8 inch wrist, which is very good. With regards to the other items, this is the owner's instruction manual. Although basic, it does have clear, concise diagrams, and the instructions are in English. It details the operation of the movement used, which is the Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz. One also gets this plastic guarantee, and I'm pleased to report the watch is covered by the usual 12 month international warranty. And lastly, one also gets this Pagani Design branded microfiber polishing cloth. I always think it's a nice touch to get a branded microfiber polishing cloth, irrespective of the price point of a piece. So, with regards to the specifications of the piece, this is the Pagani Design PD1718. The watch is clearly an homage to the Tudor Black Bay Chronograph, a watch that I've previously reviewed on my channel. And I can tell you that it is a very good homage to it because it has very similar dimensions. We have a 39.5mm case diameter. We have a lug to lug measurement of 48mm, a thickness of 12.9mm and a lug width of 20mm. The rivet link oyster style bracelet tapers from 20 millimeters at the lugs down to 18 millimeters at the two button push clasp. As you can see, the two button push clasp is very well finished, beautiful luster to the 316L grade stainless steel, signed with Pagani Designs emblem. And as you can see, the flanks are mirror polished to a flawless finish. Nice chamfer to the edge of the clasp, so it is very well finished. No sharp edges, no burrs. However, as always, I'm going to be critical of it only having three micro adjustment holes. I would like to see Pagani Design use four or even five micro adjustment holes because that would better allow for fine tuning the length of the bracelet in the absence of half links. So I would like to see either half links introduced to the rivet link bracelet because there are only full links or alternatively four micro adjustment holes. But on a positive note, the interior is solid milled 316L grade stainless steel, brass satin finish to the top side, underside and flanks, and it is finished to a very high standard. The hinge pins are a good tight fit, no extra play, and no extra play in the hinge pins in the interior of the clasp. Now, a criticism with regards to the extension link, as you can see, it's stainless steel rather than being nickel plated base metal, but unfortunately it's not the solid milled stainless steel one gets with a PD1664, for example, uh, sorry, the PD1644, or alternatively the PD1661. They have solid milled Easylink style extensions which provide 5mm of on the fly adjustment. It's pressed metal, so this is a clear cost cutting measure, and I think they would better they would be better just to delete this uh, diver's extension link because it is poor quality, although it's made from stainless steel. But having said that, it does snap into the body of the clasp with a nice positive click, and it does deploy with a good positive click. So it's not accidentally going to deploy itself, and I think it is good to have some on-the-fly adjustment in the absence of um, extra micro adjustment holes or half links in the bracelet. The two button push clasps snap shut with a nice positive click and the two button push triggers 
have a firm spring-loaded action, so it's an absolute pleasure to use. I actually prefer this two-button style clasp to the other flip-lock style clasp that Pagani Design use on their other watches, such as the PD1662 and 1661 respectively. I think this is better executed, more aesthetically pleasing, and the two-button push triggers work better than the flip-lock. With regards to the rest of the specification, we've got a double dome sapphire crystal. Now the negative of the double dome sapphire crystal is there is no anti-reflective coating on the underside. And due to it using silver applied indices, which are mirror polished, silver hands on the subdials, and also silver mirror polished snowflake hands, they are highly reflective. Now they do contrast very well with the white dial, but however, this piece really would benefit from the use of clear AR coating on the underside because as you can see, when I tilt the piece at an oblique angle, there is a lot of glare and a lot of reflection. So it really would be better if it had clear AR coating. With regards to the bezel, it has an engraved tachymeter scale and Arabic numerals, as you can see. Very high quality ceramic bezel inserts. The tachymeter scale is clearly legible with a contrasting white paint, which is inlaid. The glossy finish to the ceramic is polished to a very high standard and Pagani Design deserve full credit because this tachymeter bezel insert is finished to perfection. It really is outstanding quality. Now, unlike the PD1644, which is a Daytona homage, the edge of the bezel has a stainless steel ring, as you can see. Nice chamfer to the edge of the ring of the bezel and the side profile, the flanks of it are uh, brass satin finish but the top edge bevel is mirror polished to a flawless finish all the way around the 360 degrees as you can see so it's very aesthetically pleasing I like the mirror polished um, bevel to the edge of the uh, bezel and then we've got the flush fitting ceramic insert and also I like the fact that double dome sapphire crystal has a top hat or boxed profile to it as you can see it projects above the top edge of the um, sloped ceramic bezel insert so it's just beautiful to look at and it does a very good job of being an homage to the black bay chronograph now the black bay chronograph doesn't have a ceramic bezel insert as per the rolex daytona and i think this is a, an enhancement because the ceramic bezel insert on this piece is more scratch resistant than the aluminium bezel insert used on the black bay chronograph so it's actually superior in terms of specification and i think it looks better more like a rolex daytona with regards to the screw down crown and the screw down pushers, they all provide an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters of water resistance. So let's test the screw down crown execution. Solid mill 316L grade stainless steel embossed with the Pagani Design brand emblem and its coin edge finished to a high standard. Let's test the action. Absolutely silky smooth. This is very good quality screw down crown execution. Smooth threading on the internal thread and it interfaces very well with the external thread of the stainless steel crown tube. And I like the characteristic VK63, it's very smooth. Now this does have a date complication underneath the date, uh, underneath the dial, the date wheel is still present. So pulling it out to the first click position, one can feel a phantom date setting position. One can feel the date wheel clicking over to the next day. This is subjective. Some collectors find this to be uh, something they dislike. Personally, I don't find it to be a problem. But however, bearing in mind that the VK63 has a date complication, it does have a date wheel, it's a shame that Pagani Design didn't utilise this and make a rectangular date window at the 6 o'clock rather than having the applied rectangle index at 6. Because they could have made it look like the Black Bay with a date window at 6 and it would still have retained the symmetry and it would still look like an homage to the Black Bay chronograph. The date wheel's there so my thinking is that they may as well have used it. Pulling it out to the second click position is the time setting position and as you can see it's silky smooth. I really like the VK63 and also the VK64 because no back play whatsoever, both clockwise and anti-clockwise, nice light resistance to the mecha quartz movement, absolute pleasure to set the time. Pushing it back in restarts the movement, and let's test screwing it back down. Immediate thread pickup, this is sublime screw down crown execution, it really is top quality, it's something that Pagani Design do very well. They often have QC issues such as weak loom, no AR coating, and with, in the case of watches with rotating bezels, they have poor bezel execution. But one thing they consistently get correct and done to a high standard is the QC of the screw down crowns they're using. They really are silky smooth and they work very well. Right, so with regards to the pushers, we have two screw down pushers 
and the pushers also provide an effective hermetic seal to 100 meters. So let's test the chronograph complication. The screw down pushers feel silky smooth, just like the screw down crown. The internal thread of the screw down pusher meshes very well, it interfaces very well with the external thread of the pusher. So pressing the top pusher activates the chronograph complication and you can see the chronograph hand begins to tick around the dial. I like the contrasting red tip to the chronograph hand as you can see, clearly legible and it, they've also made the hands to the correct proportion. Often with Chinese brands, and I will include Pagani Design in this, they often undersize the proportions and the length of the hands, but if you look at the snowflake hands and the chronograph second hand, they extend all the way to the chapter ring. You can see the minute six, the minute hand reaches the chapter ring, and also the red tip of the arrowhead on the chronograph hand also reaches right out to the minute six on the chapter ring. So credit where credit's due, they've got the proportion of the handset correct. Unlike other Pagani design watches, they're not undersized, they are the correct size for this 39.5mm piece. So pressing the top pusher stops the chronograph complication, and pressing the lower pusher will make it reset to 12 o'clock. And one thing I like about the Seiko VK63 Mecha Quartz is that it resets bang on 12 o'clock every time. It's a reliable, well-proven workhorse movement, and the chronograph complication always resets with perfect alignment with the 12 o'clock triangle index on the dial. So let's test screwing back down the pushers. Absolutely silky smooth, absolute pleasure to use. I prefer this Daytona or Black Bay chronograph style of screw down pusher to the Amiga Speedmaster style of pusher, which doesn't have a screw down uh, to it. It's just a, push, a pusher that pushes in and out without any threading. And I prefer these because they provide a more effective hermetic seal, they're more water resistant. With an Amiga Speedmaster, for example, the pushers only provide 50 meters of water resistance. With a Daytona and the Black Bay Chronograph, they have 100 meters of hermetic seal due to using screw down pushers. So, really, it's more effective. It's like the benefit of using a screw down crown rather than a push pull crown, which again, the Amiga Speedmaster only has a push-pull crown because it's a manual wind. They do also make automatics, of course, but 50 meters is really not enough water resistance, even for a chronograph. I appreciate this isn't a dive piece. So I like the fact they've got screw-down pushes and a screw-down crown. Now, with regards to the dial, you can see that it says in red text UGS, and this is the first time we have seen this on a Pagani design. So I'll explain what that means. UGS stands for Upgrade Grand Series. Now, They've laser etched an anchor, which is completely irrelevant to this being a Black Bay or Mars, and the anchor really doesn't mean anything because it isn't a dive watch, it's nothing to do with the sea. But however, if you look at the uh, band on the uh, laser etched anchor, you can see it says Upgrade Grand Series, and that's what UGS stands for. So this is meant to be a high grade of Pagani design, like a premium version, uh, the PD1718. So that's what UGS is. Now, they've also laser etched the specification, water resistant, 100 meters, stainless steel, Pagani design around the circumference. Now, I dislike this laser etching. I think it's a cost cutting measure. The reason why they've used laser etching rather than engraving is because laser etching is less expensive to do. Now, it's not as durable. Laser etching does eventually wear off, whereas engraving is for the life of the watch. It's, it's not going to wear off. So I would prefer if they didn't use this abhorrent anchor, which is irrelevant, I think they should have just engraved the Pagani Design brand emblem as per the PD1644. Or alternatively, just left the centre section sterile and simply engraved the circumference with, with the specification that they have done. Just leave the centre section sterile as per Rolex, the Daytona or the Black Bay Chronograph, which this is an homage to. It's unnecessary to engrave an anchor and this upgrade grand series uh, in the centre section. And I really don't think the uh, laser etching is going to be as durable. But having said that, it is well executed in terms of its finishing. Concentric CNC lathe tool cutting to the, the centre. We've got that nice concentric pattern to the machining, as you can see. And the circumference of the screw down case back, which is solid 316L grade stainless steel, is mirror polished to a high standard. So it's a low profile case back. Perfectly flat and smooth, and it is very comfortable against the wrist. The female pivoted end links are a good tight fit to the case, and they are well finished, no sharp edges, no burrs. And I like the fact it's got female pivoted end links rather than male end links. 
The female pivot today links are a good fit, no extra play. And the female pivots allow for it to articulate very well, as you can see. It has a 48mm lug-to-lug measurement, which is perfection. That is the perfect lug-to-lug measurement, regardless of whether you have a 6-7 to seven inch wrist or a 7-8 to eight inch wrist, respectively. Had they used male end links, that would have extended the effective 48mm lug-to-lug measurement and would have rendered this piece unsuitable for collectors with a smaller wrist of 6-7 to seven inches. But the female pivoted end links, as you can see, allow for extra articulation. And it's the same design as on the Black Bay Chronograph, which this is an homage to, the same style of pivoted end links. And they work very well. And I really like them. Now, with regards to the quality of the bracelet, oyster style rivet link, as per the Black Bay Chronograph. The flanks to the rivet link bracelet are mirror polished to a good standard. And it's very well done. I like the luster to the 316L grade stainless steel, and I also like the mirror polishing to the flanks. This is subjective. Personally, I would prefer if this just used an oyster style bracelet without the rivet links. But I appreciate that this is an homage to the Black Bay Chronograph, which has a rivet link bracelet. So therefore, it does do a very good job of replicating that look. And the finishing is very good. No sharp edges, no burrs. Now, there is some play in the screw pins, as one would expect, but it is acceptable. It's one of the better uh, Pagani design bracelets they've produced and I really like the female pivoted links they are made to a good standard uh, so it's aesthetically pleasing so I'll give you a wrist shots and you can see how it fits on my inch wrist now the thing to note is this piece does come with a very long bracelet so even if you have a wrist size which is above 8 inches this will fit you no problem whatsoever I have, a, I have sized this bracelet I've actually removed two full size links from the bracelet and I can still even with two links removed, slide an index finger underneath a bracelet and clasp and that is on position 3 in the micro adjustment of the clasp. So it's got a good long bracelet and it is incredibly comfortable. Credit where credit's due, the proportions of this piece are perfection personified. 39.5 head of the piece means that it's going to fit all collectors wrist sizes regardless of whether you have a 6-7 to seven inch wrist or a 7-8 to eight inch wrist. 39.5 is a very comfortable size to wear. 155 grams with all the links in the rivet link bracelet. Now bear in mind, if you have a smaller wrist of six to seven inches, you're going to be removing four or even five links from the bracelet, and that will significantly reduce the heft to below 150 grams. I always refer to this in my reviews. For a 40 millimeter piece, I consider circa 150 grams to be the sweet spot. It gives a nice feeling of heft and comfort and wrist presence, but it means that the piece isn't top heavy and it's not uncomfortable to wear for long periods of time, such as 8 to 12 hours per day. At 155, with all the links in the bracelet, as you can see, uh, it is very well balanced. The 20mm lug width is the correct lug width and the bracelet tapering from 20 down to 18 at the two button push clasp is the correct taper. Very similar proportions to the Black Bay Chronograph, which of course is a 41 millimeter, and it has tall slab size. This actually is lower profile. It's only 12.9 millimeters, so just underneath 13 millimeters, even though it has a double dome sapphire crystal, as you can see. Therefore, it's easily going to slip underneath the shirt cuff if you wear business shirts, so an ideal daily wear piece. So I really like the 48 millimeter lug to lug measurement because that is the perfect lug to lug measurement. And the female pivoted end links, really do pull the end of the rivet link bracelet close to the wrist as you can see. So comfort level is outstanding, feel good factor is outstanding, very aesthetically pleasing. The white style with the black subdials contrasts very well, legibility is good and the black ceramic bezel insert contrasts very well with the white dial. It's just a very good looking piece. I actually prefer the look of it in terms of the proportions to the Tudor Black Bay Chronograph, which I previously reviewed, because that has very tall slab sides and it's a significantly thicker piece. Right, so let's do a loom test and we'll see how the loom performs when it's charged up to the absolute maximum. So as always, I'm going to use my 100 UV LED torch to charge it up to the absolute peak. Right, so that's now fully charged. And as you can see, initially it looks good. It clearly uses C3 Luminova rather than C3 Super Luminova. It's got the characteristic green tone of C3. It's a shame that Pagani Design don't upgrade to using Super Luminova because that would really enhance the piece. But having said that, this is one of the better quality Luminovas I've seen Pagani Design use. For example, it's stronger in performance 
than the Luminova they're using on the PD-1662 and 1661, for example. I think that it's acceptable, bearing in mind that this is a low-tier price point piece. The loom on the Snowflake hands is clearly legible. One can clearly orientate the dial. Now, of course, due to the subdials at 9 and 3 o'clock, respectively, we have absent indexes on the dial at those points. But the symmetry is good. One can clearly orientate the dial because we have a loomed triangle at the 12 o'clock position. So although it's partially obscured by the red tip of this, the chronograph second hand, one can clearly read the time in the dark, and I think the snowflake hands are very good. Now, the negative of the snowflake hands is they do obscure the view of the black subdials at 9 and 3, but the same applies to the Tudor Black Bay chronograph. That is a characteristic of using the large snowflake hands on a chronograph piece. They get in the way of viewing the subdials, but in the dark, they perform very well. So as you can see, the C3 Luminova is continuing to glow reasonably brightly and continuing to glow for a reasonable length of time. So I think it is acceptable. It is better than the 1661's Luminova, but it's still not quite as good as BGW9 or C3 Super Luminova. Right, so let's discuss the movement used because it's one of my favourite aspects of the piece. You'll all be familiar with the VK63. The architecture of the Seiko VK63 is very similar to the VK64. The only difference is the position of the subdials between the two respective mecha quartz movements, because here we have a 9 o'clock and 3 o'clock subdial with the VK64, which is used in the PD-1664 PD and PD-1644, which is a Daytona homage. We also have a third subdial at the 6 o'clock position. But really the movements are both the same, they both have a date complication. So again, it really it's a shame that they didn't, in the absence of a subdial at 6, it's a shame that they didn't use a date window and utilise the date wheel which exists underneath the dial. But having said that, uh, it's a reliable, well-proven workhorse movement. The VK63 is well-proven, it's been used for a number of years in several watches, no reliability issues whatsoever, the quality control is very high three-year battery life which is very good now the three-year battery life is based upon you using the chronograph complication for 60 minutes per day however in reality you're not going to be using the chronograph for anything like 60 minutes per day so although it has a stated battery life of three years in reality it's nothing unusual for a VK63 battery to last for four or even five years so potentially you could buy this watch and if you don't use the chronograph for 60 minutes per day, you could wear it for four to five years without ever having to change the battery. So the pr practicality of it as a daily wear piece is excellent. The thing I most like about the VK63 is the accuracy. It has a stated accuracy of plus or minus 20 seconds per month. That's not plus or minus 20 seconds per day or per week, that is per month. Better than plus or minus one second per day. Outstanding accuracy. So it's a reliable, well-proven workhorse mecha quartz movement, and it's also incredibly accurate, better than plus or minus one second per day. So the correct choice for this piece, and I like it. I actually prefer it to the Siegel ST19 that Sir Martin used in their Black Bay chronograph. I think they made a mistake with that, using a manual wind chronograph movement. Yes, the uh, Siegel ST19 is reasonably reliable. Uh, it's not particularly accurate, uh, although it is well used in the 1963, for example, I think they should have used this movement in the San Martin Black Bay chronograph. And the main reason is it allows you to reduce the thickness, because if you look at the case back, the advantage of using a mecha quartz is that it means that one can have a very low profile, slim case back, which is very flat and it fits very close to the wrist. Now, rather than using a mechanical movement, for example, uh, an automatic with a rotor, or alternatively a manual wind mechanical movement, the Mecha Quartz is considerably slimmer. So even with a double dome sapphire crystal, this is still only 12.9 millimeters thick. It's much thinner than the San Martin Black Bay chronograph homage. And it, of course, it's much slimmer than the Tudor Black Bay chronograph, which this is an homage to. So the VK63 is a better choice than the San Martin um, Black Bay chronograph, which uses the ST19. So, ironically, this is significantly less expensive at €114, Euro, but it's better. I think the movement choice is better. The ceramic bezel insert really is done very well, and I think they deserve full credit for that. Again, I think it's better done than the ceramic bezel insert used on the San Martin Black Bay Chronograph homage. I think that this one 
The tachymeter scale, the definition of the Arabic numerals and the inlay of the white paint is done to a higher standard. The alignment is also correct. The 60 minute dot aligns correctly with the 12 o'clock index, so the alignment and the marks are correct. So lastly, I'll summarize the piece. What do I think of it overall? Well, when I'm considering reviewing a watch on my channel, the watch should meet two criteria. It should be both excellent quality and excellent value at the respective price point. So 114 euro is the price point of this piece. Yes, I consider it to be excellent quality, and yes, I consider it to be excellent value for 114 euro. It is significantly less expensive than the San Martin Black Bay Chronograph homage, and I think that this is a better option. Really, the VK63 is a better choice than the SD19. Now, the negatives are the C3 Luminova isn't as good as the, Lum the Super Luminova used on the San Martin. Now, the other negative is the San Martin has AR coating on the underside of the Sapphire Crystal. This doesn't have AR coating, so these are the negatives I want you to consider. The other thing you need to consider is the use of the abhorrent pressed stainless steel divers extension. This is another cost-cutting measure rather than using a milled stainless steel divers extension as per the EasyLink style extension. The San Martin clasp is higher grade, but even though it has some cost-cutting measures, I actually prefer this because we've got a screw-down crown, screw-down pushes versus just having a push-pull crown which is needed for manually winding the ST19. So overall, if you're looking for a Black Bay chronograph homage, I think that this is a better option than the San Martin version. I think that overall, I would prefer to have a three-year battery life that can really last up to five years. And plus or minus one second per day is far better accuracy than one is going to get from an ST19. So I'm going to declare it a champagne watch for lemonade money. I'm going to highly recommend it to you for your consideration. I hope you've enjoyed my review of the Pagani Design PD1718. Please feel free to post your own comments below the video. Thank you very much.